Well, to continue with the reassembly, we'll start putting the film advance components back into the body. So I'll start with the release lever and lock lever. So I'm taking some molybdenum and paste, just running it through the holes in the casting, top and bottom, where those levers pass. On this face is where the spring on the end of the release lever runs. I'm just making sure that's lubricated too. And you don't need much molybdenum and paste. A little goes a very, very long way. Here's my lock lever and I can see that there's a little patch of corrosion right there. I don't think that contacts anything in the casting. But I'm just going to rub that off. Undoubtedly some drop of moisture found that. So, lock lever in the base of the camera. Passes right up through the casting to the top. Make sure that's seated. And I'll hold that with my finger underneath the casting. As a spring goes on that shaft, Two, two small springs. The one we want is this one, which has a smaller number of coils and it's lighter gauge of wire. And the other one, which I was just going to show you, is rolled away off the table and will have to be found. So I'm just holding that spring compressed with my thumb there to get it out, out compressed and out of the way. And I will pick up the little C clip, E clip, fit that onto the shaft, and using the tail of my tweezers I'll just click that into place, like that. And that shaft should be sprung loaded now, and I'd better find the other spring. Well it hadn't gone very far probably just as well. This is the heavier of the two springs and this one goes on the release lever. I've got to put the spring on the tip of the release lever now. Just wriggle this back onto the lever. Sometimes it's a bit entertaining and getting it seated over that boss. That's, uh, that went smoothly enough. Take note of which way that faces. That goes into the body now. Try not to get that spring bent out of shape when you're pressing this up into the body. And you might need to guide the shaft into place at the top here, the tip of the tweezers. And I'm holding the release lever compressed now. So I can fit its return spring on the top. And its return spring is held in place with this screw. That screw is going into a uh, shaft, the shaft on the top of the release lever is split. So it means it grips the screw quite tightly. Getting the screw started can sometimes be awkward, in which case it flicks away complete with spring and all. I'm convinced if you haven't got a magnet like this, you can't repair cameras. Great for finding springs. I've zoomed off into the distance. 
back where we were with this. Since this one's being such a pain, let's see if I can cheat, stick something under there to keep the lever up. And free up a hand for dealing with the spring. That was all that's required. Once you've got the screw start, and everything's easy. That spring tucked in, and I'll run that screw up. I know that the head of the screw has to pass under this tab on the shutter release. So when the shutter release is to the right at the top of its stroke. And this lever is pressed up home, that screw head must come below that lever, at least a little bit, at least that much, otherwise things won't work. It probably needs to be screwed down further than that, but that's a good minimum position. I know that's going to do me well. Right, the shutter at the uh, film advance shaft can go in, and it's the take-up spool. The take-up spool has this bush which goes in at the base, in the round hole. Now while I've got the camera here I was annoyed by the uh, clever way that every time I put it on the bench the back door would open. So let's put the tripod sockets around in there and that'll stop that happening. These screws are quite normally show some corrosion on the heads. That's because the cameras frequently get put down on wet surfaces. Either a tabletop with spilt drinks or down on the, the deck beside the pool. It's frequently cameras get put down on damp surfaces and that moisture quickly wicks up and this is why you get corroded screws at the base of cameras. Okay, so that's in place. The film advanced stuff. The take-up spool with the bush in the bottom. The bush goes to the base of the camera. Why is that not closing? better. Okay, some lubrication for this shaft I think next. Alright, today I think we'll use some synthetic grease there. Pulling back up the spring, layering some synthetic grease in there, pulling back the bush and getting some synthetic grease worked onto that shaft. And then check that the shaft, the grease runs up into the bush and everything's moving nice and smoothly. While I've got the grease here, I'll apply some to the spring. This just will make sure that the coils of the spring move over each other smoothly. Usually it's not much of a problem. All of these little ratchet areas here on the thing they could do with a touch of grease. That's where the release lever runs and these little ratchet pawls, these little pieces here, 
they control the movement of the film advance lever so that when you go swing it in to advance the film the lever will only move in one direction until it reaches its stop and then it will only return and you can't inch the lever right so I'm just lining up my holes here so I've got access to the screw holes here for putting this into the camera open the back of the camera drop my film advance shaft in place getting this lined up swing my release lever back out of the way and this should wriggle into place okay so there I have it sitting you can see the release lever is sitting in this notch the lock lever is sitting in this notch the holes line up right through the plate here right through the disc on the bottom through the plate into the body so now I can fit the three screws that go in there and hold that together these are nickel plated screws don't mess up and put the chrome plated screws in there they belong on the top cover and there are three screws as always it's best to get all three screws in position then tighten them up otherwise you inevitably find that the last screw doesn't really want to wriggle into the hole okay so I've got all three screws in position I can go around and tighten those up I think those screws were loose when I took the camera apart Right, that's that little bit done and we can flip the camera over start doing the work on the film advance stuff at the top of the camera and the first task here is to assemble the clutch the clutch is three pieces and the clutch provides us with some controlled slippage all right this part I'll use some graphite grease because I've got some and I'm just running some right around the inside of that outer drum making sure that coats smoothly and this spring there's a little tab on it which engages with a slot on this piece now if I lower my crimp lug pliers on there gently I can get this on without disturbing that, not that piece and if I revolve the whole unit like that that'll pull that spring in tightly so with the spring in tight I can put the drum over the top slide it down and there I have my clutch assembled now this will be much smoother in one direction than the other and as luck would have it the smooth direction is the right direction it's like they designed it that way so I'll take some synthetic grease just run it through the center drop this in over the top of the film advance and rotate it to the tip of my tweezers till it engages with the take up spool now we can carry on with this piece this is the bush for the top of the film advance shaft and it also has a little pinion on it in fact it's two pinions on fixed on a shaft so I'm just forcing some synthetic grease in there by the simple method of applying a nice large blob squeezing it and then the hydraulic pressure just pushes it in I'll give this a wipe through the center since I've got it in my hand and put that on the top I 
I'll revolve the take up spool with my thumb which will revolve the clutch which will allow the clutch to engage with this pinion and it's all sitting there nicely check that I haven't disturbed anything here everything's sitting nicely now there's a trick I can use here which will help me with the assembly if I can find the piece I want yes that piece that's our tripod sockets around but it works well for supporting the film advance shaft here so that as I'm working on the top of it it doesn't get pushed down and disengage the uh, pieces below it so this is held in place with two, two screws one is a shoulder screw it goes at the back here the shoulder at the top of that screw supports the shutter cocking rack helps keep it engaged firmly with the gear on the top of the film advance on the other side first we have a bush now the plain side of that bush goes up we have a little ratchet pull and we have a screw that passes through that lot and then we'll fit the return spring once I've got this all in place put a touch of grease, synthetic grease on the top of that screw where it passes through the pawl I'll screw that into position Just check that the screw goes through smoothly and that the little pawl is free to move around the shoulder on that screw around the shaft it doesn't get trapped underneath right now I'll get its spring in position the spring acts to push the pawl towards the center so it's just a case of getting this in over the top like that and that little pawl has got a bit of spring tension on it now it doesn't need much so it doesn't need to be pushing that firmly into the center it just needs to be pointing it slightly in the right direction this gear goes on next so I'm going to put a wipe of synthetic grease through the center and some on the inside edge of that this revolves around that piece there it doesn't need much and I should be able to revolve that into position or turn that anti-clockwise that should engage with the pawl there and just drop into place basically we have this spring now I normally give that a wipe with some grease not because it particularly needs lubricated but because it will protect it against corrosion it's um, spring steel, high carbon steel that is a bit prone to corrosion this piece goes on next those beveled faces are facing upwards this little drive dog goes on next now this one's got tiny little bevels on two corners those bevels go down it's entirely plain on the top surface Then we have this washer Then we have the gear And that gear fits on the top of that squared shaft
All right. We have the screw that goes in there. This one. Let's get that screw started. Is that screw a bit distorted? I think it is, isn't it? I think I might find another one to replace that. My concern with that one is that it's distorted. It's not dead flat, which means it's been stressed. And uh, it's the wrong screwdriver. And as a result, it, um, it could be prone to failure. I need to get that screw started. And then get that gear firmly seated on that squared shaft because at the moment it's popped up out of place. Get the screw started, I'll be a lot happier. That's better. Right, let me get this gear seated. That's it. I'll check underneath, make sure nothing's shifted. Everything looks very good. I can tighten that screw up. Now the lock lever is locking the film advance at the base here, so I had no problem tightening up that screw. Alright, that part's good. And this piece, I'll show you that screw if I can get this camera to zoom in enough. Yeah, this screw is dished, which and it shows a crack through at this point here. So looking at it from the side, it doesn't look flat. And this would almost certainly fail in use and cause the film advance to fall to bits. So it's lucky we spotted that. Okay, so now we need to put the lock lever in place for the rewind button. That is a return spring and a shoulder screw to hold it all in place. So I'll just pop this down and put some molybdenum paste on this piece. This is all sitting here a bit precariously at the moment. Let's see if I can get it to stay. Yes, that'll keep. Now here I'm using molybdenum paste around the tip of this lever. You could use synthetic grease, whatever you've got. That slides in that way, underneath the lever. So the little sharp piece with the stand-up tip is here. This return spring sits in here against the casting and the shoulder screw sits in here now the spring revolves around one shoulder of the screw at the moment it's trapped under the shoulder And the lever revolves around the other shoulder of the screw. So I'm making sure that's free. And I can tighten up the, the screw, check that the lever moves. And this tail of the spring here needs to be lifted over to here. So I'll pick it up with my tweezers. And lift it over. Sometimes it's easier said than done. There we go, that's what we want. So this is now spring loaded. Let's flip the camera back up the other way. Now we need to put our film sprocket in there. The slot side goes up towards the top of the camera. Here's the sprocket shaft. 
I'll take some synthetic grease, put some on the shaft towards the bottom, some towards the top, and usually I'll put a little wipe on the teeth at the top just for good measure. This slides in at the top here. Sometimes it won't want to slide in because the gears here are too don't give you enough space. Let's see how we get on today. No, so I'm going to loosen these two screws off slightly. That'll just allow this to pull back far enough that I can push that thing down. It should go now. Yep, there it goes. That shaft should come up through the base of the camera, through here. Sometimes you might need to line it up a bit or help it. With the tip of your tweezers, see how it's lifting up. If I keep pressing on it, hold back this tab, it will come back up into its rest position. At that point, the gear here should be engaged at the top. Now, I'm going to put the screw in here that connects the two up, connects the shaft and the sprocket together. Lining up the hole there in the slot, you can rotate this here, take up spool in order to get that to come round for you. I'm just fortunate here it was already in the right place. And get this screw in position. Now sometimes that'll go in smoothly like that. Other times it's extremely hard to get it to start. If it's extremely hard to get it to start, revolve this shaft 180 degrees and try from the other side. Often it's easier to lead the screw in from one side than the other. Okay, so that part's good. The rewind button needs to go on the base. So we've got the rewind button, it's spring and it's washer. So I'll just put a bit of synthetic grease into the spring, put the spring on the button, put the washer over the button, taking the camera body, put my finger over the top of the sprocket shaft so it doesn't push out of the way, and then just screw this in from the base. You have to make sure that the washer goes around the screw and doesn't get caught under the shoulder of the screw. You can see I've got movement there. It tells me I'm right. And then I can do that up. And how do I know I've got it up, done up tight enough? Well, I just hold my thumb on the sprocket. Use my pliers to tighten that button. If your thumb hurts, that's, that's more than... That's, that's good enough. That's not coming loose. Alright, so that part's looking pretty good. We're just about ready to close up the base of that camera.